Game number one, I wasn't entirely sure how to drop into Paradise Palms. This was the first game of the first day in the season. And as you can imagine with most new locations, it was pretty busy. I dropped into these modern houses on the southern portion of Paradise Palms. These houses are at first confusing to navigate, but once you get their layouts down, they can be a very good place to get some kills, especially against other players who don't really know the layouts as well. But again, this was only game one. After snagging a kill, I made my way over to the hotel. It's the tallest building in Paradise Palms. You can't miss it. It's also the building with the highest density of loot. I guess the footage for game one was just a little bit corrupted, but we still got that kill. Ultimately, the mistake I made was running out of materials. Just a little bit of materials go a very long way in Paradise Palms, but if you don't have any, you're definitely gonna die. Game number two, the bus was very far away from Paradise Palms, and for reasons you'll find out later in this video, that means you should probably go there. I dropped right on top of this Honda Civic and looted a chest. You really don't want to stay in this area for long, especially if you don't have a gun. Two of my enemies found out that lesson the hard way, and then soon after, I was also killed. Yeah, it's definitely not a good idea to walk around in the streets. Game three, I decided not to drop directly into Paradise Palms. The Paradise Palms slash desert area of the map is fairly large, and there's a lot of unnamed locations nearby Paradise Palms. And while they're not technically in Paradise Palms, they're close enough where I'm gonna feature them in this video. And in game three, I went to the racetrack. Don't let this gameplay fool you. Most of the time, when you drop into the racetrack, there's almost no one else there. But remember, this was the first day of Paradise Palms. The loot here ain't that great, but there is almost always a chance that you will spawn a golf cart. All right, I guess it's actually called the all-terrain cart, but I call it a golf cart. Anyway, the golf carts spawn here pretty often. The only thing generally standing between you and one of them is a kill or two. The golf carts can be fairly helpful when you drop into Paradise Palms. Generally, when you drop into Paradise Palms, you're gonna be very far from the center of the map and using the golf carts, you can close that distance. But they are very loud and easy to shoot, so you wanna be very careful. Luckily for me, my aggressor was only a default skin new. While killing the soulless default skin, my cart was lost in the storm. If you drop into Paradise Palms, just be ready to run a pretty far way to the safe circle. This isn't the end of the world if you have a far circle. Just remember that while you're running towards that circle to farm materials. I was very far away and was tickled by the storm on three separate occasions because of it. And while sitting at the bottom of a mountain, I was sniped in the face. Game four, I did a little bit more exploring of the greater Paradise Palms area. On the southern edge of the map, there's this little town, which is actually really awesome to go to. There's a lot of loot here, spread out across tons of different little houses. Even in busy times, it's hardly traveled to. It's very rare you'll find more than one person here. You'll also find that this and other areas inside of Paradise Palms are almost always littered with these rifts. These rifts will shoot you straight up into the sky and allow you to soar over the map. This one allowed me to get all the way down to Fatal Fields, but sometimes the circle is far away enough where that won't even help you. Fighting with your back to the storm is never easy. This player was able to build up inside the safe circle and take me down as I was running towards him. It's a very easy and safe strategy on his part. My chances were low, and yeah, I died. He lived with 14 health and I had to watch him heal all the way to max! For game five, I decided to stop trying to be creative and drop directly into Paradise Palms. Well, not really. I dropped to the Shack of Seclusion. This is a terrible drop. Don't drop here. I ran into Paradise Palms with zero expectations and found a player who had not yet found a gun. He was probably just confused to the layout of this house. Yeah, it can be a little bit confusing. Remember, this is still day one Paradise Palms. A lot of the guys that I'm gonna kill here, it's probably their first time dropping in. In the early games, you'll see a lot of guys come after me with just guns, no materials. Materials are in Paradise Palms. They're just a little bit harder to find. And running without them will almost always mean you're dead. The small trees, hedges, and bushes around Paradise Palms all can add up to mean some pretty good materials. And like I said before, materials in Paradise Palms do go a very long way. Getting some at the start of the match could mean a good amount of kills. Again, these rifts are almost everywhere in Paradise Palms, so use them to your advantage. I had made it all the way down to Dusty Divot and caught a man trying to loot. Call me the Rift Master. I was attacked by a default skin who had recently learned to fly. Thankfully, like all default skins, he was absolutely garbage. Here I had the opportunity to leave the area and get to the safe circle. I should have, but I didn't. There was quite a lot of killing, and when the dust settled, I was dead. Game six, I dropped into the northeastern modern houses in Paradise Palms. The modern houses in Paradise Palms are pretty much identical in every aspect. They all can spawn two chests, have a fairly decent amount of ground loot, and can leave you with some pretty decent materials. I like dropping to them because it's a little bit safer as a drop. You're not as likely to be ambushed, and they're nowhere near as busy as the hotel. Again, they're nowhere near the best drop in Paradise Palms, but they're probably the most consistent, and that's why I dropped to them the most. You might also notice my
my upgraded drift skin. Yeah, this isn't the first day of season five anymore. Paradise Palms isn't new, at least for this gameplay. By this point, my strategy had developed to dropping at the modern houses, looting what I could, and killing anyone in Paradise Palms. The player that I just killed was busy looting the hotel. But since I killed him, it's like I looted the hotel. I know I've said this before, but just a little bit of materials goes a very long way in Paradise Palms. This Omega was forced to run away, and I shot him before he could. And yeah, even though Paradise is far away, jumping into a rift or using a golf cart can get you to the circle. In this particular game, I probably wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for this golf cart. I found a default friend. Don't worry, there wasn't any pain. I shot a guy who was mid-air on his glider. When he started charging me, I knew this was a mistake. Eh, it's fine, I killed John Wicks before. I have rockets and a heavy shotgun, I'll be fine. He got the high ground and I almost as quickly fell off the structure. And yeah, when you're fighting someone good and that happens, you're pretty much always gonna end up dead. I win later on, don't worry. But not in game seven. Oh, is that, is that a skull trooper? Nice. Another reason I really like dropping at the modern houses is that some of them can spawn golf carts. In fact, of the five modern houses in Paradise Palms, three of them have a chance of spawning a golf cart. But like this guy, you don't want to take them too early. I tend to spend a little bit more time than normal in Paradise Palms because of all of the different ways that you can leave the area. This isn't your normal faraway location in Fortnite. There's a ton of loot in the Paradise Palms and Greater Paradise Palms area, but there's also a ton of these rifts which allow you to leave the area pretty quickly. And my strategy stayed fairly consistent throughout the 100 drops. I'd drop into Paradise Palms, kill some people, get some loot, and leave with either a golf cart or a rift. In this particular game, the circle was fairly close to Paradise Palms, which means I didn't really need to travel that far with either the rifts or the golf carts. These are the games you hope for when you drop into Paradise Palms. You're hoping for that close circle. You're hoping that your enemies are going to have low health, ammo, and resources when they come to fight you. Because no matter what, if you outgun someone in Fortnite, you definitely have an advantage. This particular game ended in a mad dash for the final circle. It was one of those weird circles where it moves within the circle. I don't know. This sort of final circle was new with season five, and throughout this video, I'll show you how to master it. But in this game, I didn't. Game nine, I dropped into the shops in Paradise Palms. There's three shops in the middle of Paradise Palms right next to the hotel. These are not a good place to go. For starters, they have pretty much the exact same loot as the modern houses in Paradise Palms that I was talking about earlier. All of the shops can spawn up to two chests, just like the modern houses. But because you're in the middle of Paradise Palms, you're going to be attacked far more often, especially since you're real close to that hotel. I got drawn into combat around the hotel. Sometimes it's just unescapable. And when it comes to early combat in Fortnite, eventually someone will run out of mats and eventually you'll die. Game 10, I dropped into Paradise Palms and was completely alone. The safe circle was very far, but again, I just grabbed a golf cart. Still died though. As you can probably tell, I'm dropping into the hotel to try to learn the layout. It's confusing, it's treacherous, but it also has a ton of loot, so I figured it might be a good idea to learn it. I set my controller down just for a second to write down in my catalog what had just happened, but before I could get back, a Zoe dropped in. It's okay, I don't even think she really knew what happened. Yeah, the rest of the game was fairly uneventful and I died like a coward. Game 12, I dropped in, grabbed a hunting rifle, and knew I only had one shot. I missed, and then of course, soon after, I was killed. I knew I'd learn the hotel eventually, I just didn't know how many times I'd have to die before that happened. I was left completely alone in paradise, able to loot to my heart's content. I even was able to find a golf cart. I was feeling good about this game, but I didn't look where I was going and fell to my death. Game 14, I had enough of Paradise, to be honest, I just, I need a little break. So I dropped back into the small town south of Paradise Palms. And wouldn't you know it, I was instantly killed. Okay, I'm gonna drop at the golf cart place, things are gonna be fine. <coughs> Game 16, I put the John Wick skin on. It was a pretty low stress drop into Paradise Palms. No one else was there, I was able to loot everything. I grabbed a golf cart and went on my way. Not to confuse you, but this is footage from Game 40. Notice as I sprint past the speed radar, it reads 12 miles per hour. For comparison, a golf cart going at top speed in a straight line will get you 24 miles per hour. I know it says 25, but that's just because this particular section's a little bit downhill. Figuring out the boost speed was harder than it looked because you can only boost after drifting, which made it a little bit tough to get in the right spot. Luckily, we can just look at a still frame. I was able to get 38 miles per hour with this boost. Now we're going back to game 16, and the whole reason I went to game 40 was just to show you how fast the golf cart actually is. It's twice your sprinting speed. In the early to middle game especially, these golf carts can be great to get you good position. They're also a very fun vehicle to use. It reminds me of the Warthog in the Halo series. Just a very easy and fun vehicle to drive. The final circle was closing in on Tilted Towers, and whenever this happens, you know you're gonna have to fight some sweats. But I consider myself a sweat, so it's fun. With season five, Fortnite changed the way the final circle behaves at the end of a game. The circle can and will become very small and move to an area that is already covered by the storm. When this happens, the first person to get near that new circle is almost always the person that wins. You can see here, I prioritized putting myself near the edge of the current circle, but close enough to where the new circle is going to be. This put me in the perfect position to win. I was able to figure out exactly 
exactly where my enemy was, and I was able to take him down. Eh, first win, 16 games in, not, not terrible, not terrible, I've done worse. Game 17, I dropped into doubles, or duos? I call it doubles though. We dropped into the small town and met resistance from kids with good skins but no skill. We killed two guys down in Tomato Town, rest in peace. I surprised a player in Wailing Woods but was almost instantly surprised myself. It was all up to Snipultaneous at this point, it was a pretty nasty build war because of all of the trees in Wailing Woods. It was very easy to get lost, that's what happened to him and yeah, he died. Game 18, we played some squads. Everything was going pretty well until the group disbanded. We died soon after. Game 19, I tried, I really did, but SMGs were still pretty strong at this point. Game 20 shows just how nice Paradise Palms can be if you're not really looking to fight anybody. Here, I didn't have any kills, I got to loot all of Paradise, Lonely Lodge, a bunch of other places, and I just drove to the last circle. But, we're still playing Fortnite, which means if you want to win, you gotta kill. And if you can't kill, then, well, you lose. Game 21, I started going back into the modern houses. These, again, are on the east side of Paradise Palms. They have decent loot, decent materials, and if you learn their layouts, you can take people by surprise. I think fighting on the east side is definitely easier, especially if you know the layout. There's lots of really sneaky things that you can do. While attacking a drift, I was shot in the back from Dusty Divot. I would not live this encounter. Okay, we need another win. That means the John Wick skin's going on. It was easy, like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I don't know either. I guess I just play better with them. Game 23, I dropped at this little oasis next to the truck stop. I found a blue pump, started farming materials, and was killed soon after. Game 24 is missing. According to the catalog, I got sweated on. Game 25, I dropped in with all of my stuff set to random and it ended up being a pretty interesting combination. I was alone in paradise. I looted all of it. I got a couple kills. This one was pretty nice. In the end, I gotta give it to the other guy. This is a pretty nice snipe. Game 26, I did the random thing again. It, it just gave me another soccer player. I think every individual number in Jersey is counted as a random. Oh well, not like I'm gonna live that long anyway. You see, at this time, there was a challenge to eliminate opponents in Paradise Palm. So this meant not only that a lot of people were going there, but they were looking for blood. Hey, look at that, I got it. I fled the area in a golf cart, knowing I wouldn't last long. I guess this is the first time we're bringing up the junkyard just south of Paradise Palms, and that's because it's not that great. I generally don't go here unless I'm desperate or scared of Paradise Palms. I had very little health at the end and I ran into another player. Here I thought I built over, but he was actually below blowing up the structure and I died. Game 27, 28, 29. All right, hold on, just give me one, just gotta flick that on. Now which one am I gonna do when I win? Meh, eh, meh, not that, eh, maybe that one. Ooh, that one ain't bad. Good old, good old robot, maybe? Oh, the gentleman dab. Yep, we gotta do it. What I love about this one is you can see the very moment the other guy lost the game. Using that storm is key now. Oh, and there's definitely more wins for sure. Game 31, I was looking for some back-to-back -back solo wins. I've never done it, at least on camera. You have to understand that this time I had probably enough G Fuel in my system to kill a horse. I was really looking for that back-to-back. -back. This is one of my favorite sequences in this whole video. I get the nice little laser assault rifle kill on this guy, and then the little cat... The little catty boy, he's down there, he doesn't even see me, I'm poking through the holes, taking the man down! Don't mess with me inside of Dusty Divot. I became an inhuman creature when I dropped here 100 times. Also, I'm the master of laying traps when it comes to Dusty. And no, I'm not gonna show you where I put that one. Then you'd be safe. The final circle ended up being right inside of Dusty Divot, and I'm comfy here. I knew exactly what to do. Oh, and also at the time, SMGs were super strong! It was before the nerf, they did tons of damage. This is a blue one, it just absolutely tore through this guy, got me to win. I'm sorry, man. I, I just had to do it. Game 32 was played with I Spiteful. Shout out. With six people left, Spiteful left the safety of my portafort to go on a suicide mission against two other players. He was down. I rushed in because, you know, never leave a man behind. Luckily for Spiteful, I was able to orphan his killer's children. But then it was me against two dudes, which you know, I've done before. It's, it's possible, just not probable. Please, sir, no, I'm unarmed. Game 34, I killed two guys in pretty rapid succession using the drum gun. It's pretty good. But then, of course, Karma came around to get me. Game 35, I dropped back into the junkyard. I don't think I gave it a good enough chance last time I dropped here. Again, upon my second evaluation of this place, really not a good place to drop initially. I mean, it's, it's a junkyard. What do you want? I mean, part of the reason I had to run through the storm, I almost died several times, is because there were no golf carts anywhere near the junkyard. I had to run incredibly far. I had virtually no materials, and in the end, I died. Game 36 isn't a particularly good game. I actually end up losing. But it does show this pretty awesome patch of small trees and cactuses to the northwest of Paradise Palms. One complaint about Paradise that I had myself and that I hear from a lot of people is that it's hard to get mats, but right here there are tons. So a good strategy when you're about to leave Paradise is always come to the northwest, farm some cacti, farm some trees, you'll have a lot of wood for fighting. I was sort of on my last leg here down in Retail Row. There were only four people left, but I was very low on health. The storm started moving and 
and oh yeah nice game 37 i dropped onto some of the mountains around paradise palms these can be an all right place to drop because sometimes there can be rifts on top of these mountains but in this particular game that didn't happen and that's when you don't want to drop on the mountains you'll be stranded on top for the early game with some pretty bad loot and you'll probably end up losing and yeah that's what happened game 38 i took part in one of the wildest port fort parties i had ever seen this man tried to do me with the shoddy and bam okay sometimes these are hard to watch because literally this entire game could have gone better if i just didn't miss that shot i honestly wish i could have dropped at the smurf village just a little bit more i, I didn't want to drop here too many times i really enjoy it i just didn't want the whole video to be me at the smurf village but this place is secluded it has tons of loot and if you know how to navigate it can be pretty easy to get some kills oh yeah in this game i got that nice paradise palm circle i could go in and kill the guys in it i was gonna have tons of loot if i could pull it off i didn't end up finding anybody but i did find some rifts which would give me better position and yeah because of how the circle behaves now sometimes all you need to do to win is be in the right position you already saw game 40 i showed it when i was benchmarking the speed of the golf cart i was also going for back-to-back -back wins i felt pretty good about my chances but the game disconnected yeah that was annoying game 41 yeah sorry little village my bad this time i left with one kill and a golf cart here's why you want to be in good position this time i'm in the final circle not in good position i have to kill this guy behind me which i did pretty easily because he was terrible but that storm was still moving and when someone's shooting at you while also in the storm it's pretty easy to die oh no not like this whatever man the next game i put on the wick scan and won like a champion game 43 my first kill was against this unsuspecting drifty boy i think i built so fast here that this guy's heart stopped he, he didn't even shoot back at me this clip shows why you shouldn't use the go-karts once the circle gets to a certain size you're very loud and you never know where there might be a sneaking john wick Game 44, I dropped to the bridge northeast of Paradise Palms. It's not a terrible place to drop. Sometimes there'll be a chest or two here, and you're very close to all the materials in the northwest of Paradise Palms. I didn't get any kills until I ran down to Fatal Fields, which is where you can almost always find a noob. Real quick though, every pellet clearly going through her body? Yeah, 17 damage. Whatever, it's just a game. Game 45, I dropped into the squads mode with some familiar faces. No, it didn't really go that well. I don't know why, every time I try to play squads, it doesn't go well. Game 47, we dropped in and didn't die instantly. We died later though. Game 48 was just some duos with the misses. She went down and I defended her honor. The bus was right over Paradise Palm, so it was pretty intense. There were quite a lot of guys all around us. Help, I can't swim. <laughs> we were pretty close to winning, but at the end of the day, he had rockets. We didn't. Game 49, we went back to the squads mode and back to losing. Game 50, I bought the suntan specialist. I just thought it fit well. Yeah, it would have been nice to win that one. Too bad I came in second place. Game 51, I dropped into Paradise Palms, looted the entire thing, didn't find anybody. I was having a pretty good game. I thought I would win and yeah, sniped. Game 50, was actually going pretty well. I had made it pretty far in the game and then my audio cut out for some reason. I don't know why. I had to play the rest of the game silent and I died. Game 53, right as I dropped in, I was called away because my Roomba was eating a houseplant. I have no idea how, but I managed to make it to seventh place. I'm gonna be honest, game 54, I underestimated this default man. Game 55, Paradise Palms was pretty crazy. No one was leaving there alive. Game 56 was probably gonna be a pretty awesome game, but we'll never know because it disconnected. Yeah, I was bad. I, I dropped into the small village again. I just really wanted to win with this skin and I knew going to the small village, probably I could get one. What? A noob in Fatal Fields? That's never happened before. This guy was actually doing a pretty good job evading me, but backed up into a trap. These fools built up probably used half of their mats creating this massive structure when I know that really to win this game, all I gotta do is sit right here. I had the perfect position. So when the storm started to move in, I got the win. Nothing really interesting happened in game 58. So I'm just gonna play a clip of me eating some birthday cake. Game 59, 60. Game 61 doesn't even exist. It's just loading screen, black screen. Somehow in game 62, even with this OP machine gun, I still die. Game 63, I made it all the way down to Dusty Divot and was killed by a cat in a bathrobe. I don't really think that bright teal skin is gonna work. Uh? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. In Paradise, the only guy I had to kill was this little burnout. Didn't put up much of a fight. I used the rifts next to the Honda Civic to get a pretty good position. Yup, this is the first time I lost a solo as Wick. At least in this series. I don't know, Pleasant's the kind of place where if you really want to, you can use the good loot and position to get a win most times. Assuming you get at least a little bit lucky. Though if you're like me, you lack SMG skills, and if you lack SMG skills, then you lack the ability to win. Enough Wick, I'm going in as Jonesy. 
This isn't normal squads though, this is that slow storm mode. Very nice mode if you're going to Paradise Palms because it's near the edge of the map. I was able to loot everything without any trouble and then go straight to the center of the circle using a rift. But I was alone in the squads game and that never pans out well. Game 67 was another game where I played pretty well, I just didn't win. Game 68, remember, jump over those hedges, they never see it coming. Oh and also you want to farm those for mats as well. Really can't stress that enough. I don't agree with the damage that I got, but whatever. Game 69, I was feeling pretty good. Then I got sniped. Near the end of this series especially, you'll notice that I get into the top 10 quite a bit. I feel that Paradise is a very easy transition into late game if you can play it correctly. But then you gotta play late game, and that's hard too. Let's pump the brakes just a little bit. We're gonna go into some 50v50. It's great at Paradise Palms. Especially if Paradise is on your side, it's very easy to loot to your heart's content. No one will probably even bother you. Then you just grab a golf cart and make your way to the war zone. We won the first game I played, even though I was on the ground for it. This is game 72. Yeah, I had to play a couple games of 50-50 at Paradise. It's just awesome. Game 73, I was killed by a ravenous default skin. Game 74, I dropped directly to a pinata in the middle of the street. My luck was nuts. The next chest I opened had another chug jug. <laughs> You may have heard of hunting rifle sniping, but this is drum gun sniping. You gotta love sniping a guy who doesn't expect it. I'm telling you guys right now, I win so many games just using a launch pad, using position to outsmart the other guy. Here, I jumped away from the moving storm and won the game before I had even landed. Game 75, I developed a new strategy, the anti-aircraft gun. I love the minigun. I used it to stop a rocket coming after me too. You know me, using that launch pad, getting to the best spot. There was a cat infestation that I cleaned up pretty quick with my drum gun. This is why I pick up the minigun, because at the end of the day, in a 1v1, it's one of the hardest things to defend against. Almost impossible. And now, it's gotten me back-to-back -back wins, twice. Game 76, I was attacked by two separate defaults. One of them didn't make it, but neither did I. Game 77, I killed a Ragnarok, which always feels good. Still died though. I'm gonna be honest, this guy probably, I should have killed him. I mean, I didn't. I didn't kill him, but you know, probably should have. This right here is the worst drop in this entire series. I, I wasn't even close. I put all my faith in my own ability to use a tactical shotgun. Unfortunately, I suck. Finally, we're at the 80s. It gets way easier when you get to the 80s. Game 80 was pretty standard. Looted Paradise without killing anybody and left with a rift. But then I got to Dusty Divot and was challenged by someone who was clearly better. Game 81, I dropped under the hotel just because I didn't see anyone else around. Not because I'm brave or anything. I guess I should have been a bit more diligent. Game 82, I dropped into my go-to modern house. Even today, this is still my preferred drop when going into Paradise Palms. I didn't have to kill anyone and I rifted away. It's easy! My first kill was this poor soul. I couldn't even see this guy. Still killed him. Yup, nothing like superior position and rockets to guarantee there's pretty much no way you're gonna lose this match. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even being sarcastic. I, I actually did win. Game 83, I showed this guy why you gotta be careful when you're looting that truck in the middle of Paradise. I don't know how, but it was Rust Lord City in this match. With three people left, I had a pretty risky one-on-one -on -one that I won! Hooray! The only other guy in the match started shooting me pretty much immediately. Smart of him, I was in the storm. I dropped a very clutch launch pad that allowed me to get to the opposite end of the circle. When I turned around to build up, I noticed he was coming at me with a golf cart. Wh what From here, he was caught under my stairs and it was a pretty easy rocket to get the victory. Sorry about that one, Crispy Dingle 69 Game 84. 85. 86 was close, and even though I ended up losing the fight, I did figure out what I did wrong, and that is going to help me in future fights. Sure, I got better by actually playing those games, but the editing process makes me sort of have to reflect on some of them and figure out what I did wrong. Like here, let's look at game 88. This is a one-on-one -on -one inside of Dusty Divot. Storm is moving. I make the pretty safe play by once I get down, I start to build up as best as possible. Though, I mean, if you look at my materials, I have over 800. I should have built way more here. And because I didn't build, I died. Game 89 was very helpful. It told me that I'm trash. Game 90, same old, same old. Looted all of Paradise Palms, only had to get one kill and used a rift to get away. Wait, real quick, just gotta kill this guy and embarrass him from front of all of you don't reload. Okay, got him. I got some pretty nice stuff out of some chests, so I was getting a lot of kills. By the end, most of my stuff was legendary, I had rockets, pretty much everything I needed to win. And for the final elimination, I got an almost textbook kill with the sawed off shotgun. Carbide, I swear, I never forgot about you. Game 91, I learned that I should probably turn down my sensitivity. Going that fast isn't helping anybody. Hey, at least when I died in game 92, I went out with a blaze of glory. Game 93, I made it to the final circle with three people left in an almost perfect position to win. But the game disconnected, no! Game 94, I looted all of Paradise Palms. I only had to kill one defaulty. On my trip down to Fatal Fields, I ran into an Omega. He probably bought it with V-Bucks. I was attacked by guy number two. I did a pretty good job of fighting him, but he had full health and I didn't. Game 95, I started to use this weird stair-wall combination that in theory could be a 
little bit harder to shoot. It worked against this guy. I made it all the way to the final three people. It was me, a carbide, and another default. But unfortunately, I sandwiched myself between the two players, and when this happens, it's pretty hard to survive. Game 96 is missing. So instead, I just played one on the PC. I'm not used to this! Game 97, for the final time, I dropped in to the small village. I thought maybe I could squeeze one more win out of this sucker. There was a little more company than I'm generally used to at the Smurf Village, but I took him down. Oh, and check out kill number three. Guy standing in the middle of the storm, and boom! I quickly saw another player hiding behind a rock. I only had 100 health, so I tried to be a little more conservative, but he quit before I could kill him. Best thing about defaults in the open is they don't even know they're gonna die. I had never found shields, which means that every fight that I got in to, I had to do almost double damage than they did to me. What sucks is I've never won with the Toxic Trooper skin. Well, maybe next time. Game 98, something compelled me to drop into the hotel. I didn't conquer it. In fact, I had to run away from this carbide, though I found out the hard way that you can survive a fall from the top. I quickly grabbed a shotgun and a slurp juice and gave his mother a closed casket funeral. Paradise was fine, but there was a lot more fighting in Fatal Fields. I probably could have killed this kitty cat, but I blew myself up while backpedaling. And yeah, from there, it was pretty easy for him. Game 99, I did a sweaty drop and my favorite house. What's embarrassing is I kill tons of people like this. So many people think you can jump up using this hedge and I kill him right then, but not this guy. It's time. Game 100. I really enjoy Paradise Palms, personally. I go here a lot, even when I'm not recording. It's such a diverse, awesome location with tons of great loot that's also secluded. It's got everything. And dropping here 100 times, I know it like the back of my hand. Kill 1 wasn't until I got to Dusty Divot. It was against my opposite. Kill 2 was just me taking advantage of a moving storm which got this cat off guard and then he was pretty easy to take down. While healing, I was attacked by a drift without a mask. This is worse than a default skin. Kill 4 was just a poor little defaulty running in a straight line. Remember kids, jump when you're running away. Way. Well, I'm trapped in the storm. I'm proud of my final build battle. I didn't end up winning, but I did put up a good fight. I was the first one to get over the other guy, but he had a purple scar and ended up taking me down. I tried to outbuild it, but I was in a weird position and wasn't able to. I fought well, gave him hell, and in the end, I died with honor. Paradise Palms is a wonderful place to drop. I learned that personally when I dropped there 100 times. If you haven't gone to Paradise yet, I highly suggest it. And if you do frequent Paradise Palms, leave. This is my land. I do want to thank you all for watching this 100 Drops video. The support on all of these is just fantastic. Thank you so much. If you don't want to miss the next one, click the LTN logo in the bottom left of your screen to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all of my content. So when the next one drops, you'll see it. Thank you all for watching. I want you all to please stay notable, and I will see you in the next video.